talk about golden hour. We're gonna go over what it is exactly, what I like to do when I'm out on a shoot, and uh, I recently took a bunch of photos on the Mamiya RZ67. I shot on Portrait 400, and then I also shot a couple on Lamography 800 and Fuji Pro 400H. So I'm gonna go over a little bit about those photos, and then I'm gonna talk about what I would have done differently. First, let's talk about what golden hour is. First thing you should know is that golden hour is not actually an hour long. The time varies based on your relation to the equator. So the closer you are to the equator, the shorter the time you're gonna get. And the phrase golden hour is really just talking about the time after the sun rises and then before the sun sets. Now you've seen what golden hour looks like before in some of your favorite movies. This is really one of the most magical times of the day and filmmakers like to make use of this because of how the light looks. So what's happening is the sun is having to cut through more of the atmosphere and the blue rays are actually reduced, which leaves you with that tungsten, warmer, uh, orangey light. Uh, it's gonna actually be around 3,500 Kelvin. So if the sun is really low, but it's still casting light on things, then they're gonna create longer shadows going the opposite way. So if you're taking landscape photos or if you're taking portraits, just know that if you're facing away from the sun, you're gonna have a really long shadow. So what I like to do is make sure I have a longer lens for my shoot. Usually you'll hear that it's better to shoot with a wider lens so that you can capture all of the golden hour beauty. Uh, but for taking photos, I like to use a longer lens. The lower the sun gets, the longer your shadow will be and the more likely it is to get in your shot if you're shooting with a wider lens. So for this shoot, I used a 110 millimeter. It's the only lens I have for this camera, but that roughly translates to like a 55 millimeter if you're shooting on a 35 millimeter camera. So it's not exactly super long, but it did allow me to kind of step back and be removed and not get my shadow in many of the shots. Now, if you're taking portraits, uh, the hardest part about golden hour is figuring out where to position your model. So for my portrait video last week, it was just about golden hour, enough to where the sun was on one side of Kendall's face. Uh, but it was blasting on her hair, kind of creating that edge light that you see. So anytime you have a model faced away from the sun and the sun is low kind of on the horizon, you're gonna get a lot of shadow where their face is. So it's important to consider bringing a reflector or any kind of white cardboard, something to bounce light back on their face. For this shoot, I didn't really have anything, so I just grabbed a, a reflector from the car. But if you do decide to buy a reflector, uh, we like to use this Westcott 40 inch reflector. If you're able to get like a gold side like this, uh, this is better for the color temperature to match what the sun is putting on the opposite side of your subject. Now, when we left the office, uh, I wanted to shoot some Portrait 400. I'd shot lots of Portrait 400 before, uh, but I just wanted to get a few like, you know, standard test shots for a golden hour with the Portrait. Um, and then right whenever we walked out, we ran into a portrait shoot that was already happening. And so I just asked them if I could hop in and and take the guy's photo. And I really like the way Portrait handles the color green. Uh, and I, he already had a really cool look with like his jacket and everything. So we got really lucky. So for the rest of the shoot, we walked around and took pictures of the buildings there. And it was kind of this weird boarded up like log cabin thing that was lifted off the ground and it looked like they were gonna move it. But it's been there for a while. So I took a photo of that and then I stepped back and decided to try to get the little bulldozer in the shot with it because I wanted to see the red and mix with the kind of rough looking house. And then after that, we kind of walked around. I saw a couple buildings. And that's when we realized that uh, golden hour goes by really quickly. Uh, we were not prepared, especially because we were making a video. And so we thought we could just kind of like walk around and shoot. But in reality, like we had little to no time. Um, once the sun actually started going down, it was around like 20 minutes. So I decided to come back another night. Uh, but this time I was going to go to a park near my house and I was shooting on Fuji Pro 400H. Now I've used this film a little bit, but I haven't shot at golden hour. So if you're shooting on film and you're metering, be prepared to meter a lot because the light is changing so quickly. Uh, I tend to overexpose by a stop or two when I'm shooting golden hour because a lot of the times maybe I'll frame up a shot, I'll meter, and then I spend 
even if it's 30 seconds focusing and then maybe the light's gone down just a bit. And so I like to overexpose because the color film can handle just a bit of overexposure. Which brings up a photographer that I think is worth following. His name is Kyle McDougall. Uh, he's made a couple videos on YouTube that are really good and they all handle overexposure and underexposure for film stocks. So he's got a video on Portra, he's got a video on Ektar, he's got a video on Pro or Fuji Pro 400H, uh, which I shot a little bit of, which I'll show you in a second. Um, but his photos and his videos are really good, really thorough, and I recommend checking them out. He's a really, really good photographer, and you should follow him on Instagram if you're not already. So just like the day before, uh, once the sun started setting and golden hour hit, I realized that I didn't have as much time as I had wanted to, especially because I didn't scout the place at all. Now because golden hour happens in the morning and then at night, I would recommend if you're taking landscape photos uh, to take those in the morning. Here are the reasons why. Nobody's out, it's too early. Uh, businesses are closed if you're trying to take pictures of businesses. Uh, there are less cars out on the street, so you can get places that you maybe normally couldn't go in like the middle of the day or at night. Now, if you're wanting to shoot street photography or portraits, I recommend doing that at the end of the day. You'll have a way bigger selection to shoot from, more people will be out, and you'll most likely be able to get people to agree to do a portrait shoot later in the day versus first thing in the morning. So over on the field, there were some kids playing soccer, which I wanted to try to get a shot of. Now I wanted to see how the Fuji Pro would handle the color red, so I just took a shot of the curb. But I actually ended up liking that photo a lot. There were also some guys playing basketball near me, um, and it would have been perfect, but I just could not work up the guts to go over there and ask if I could take their photo. It's really hard to ask a stranger if you could take their photo. Now, I'm gonna be going to Dallas soon to take some golden hour shots of some of the older buildings down there, so be looking out for that. That about does it for today, guys. Let me know if you wanna see me review any film stock or camera in the comments below. All right, I'll see you in the next one.